In this video, we're going to be going over image augmentation, specifically augmentation of key points that are going to be creating the polygons uh, to make the masks on our image. Because we're working with uh, such a small number of images and annotating images is very expensive in terms of time, uh, we would like to be able to augment the default data set that we've kind of created such that um, every single new batch that is sent over to a machine learning algorithm, uh, it sees a slight variation of data every single time. So the data is going to be constantly changing, but what this will do is allow our algorithm to reach a more uh, general solution and be able to generalize uh, to unseen data a little bit better instead of creating a fragile solution that will break because it's only been trained on like 200 images, for example. There are a couple of ways to go about image augmentation. For example, if you go over here, Keras has a really nice image data generator class that you can easily build into a, a pipeline. And this is great for standard image classification task. However, when you start to deal with more complicated data like key points, uh, bounding boxes, image masks, I tend to prefer a different library for something like that. Um, so for any kind of image augmentation you would really ever need, I use something called Image Aug. So taking a look at Image Aug's homepage here, if you scroll down, you'll see an overview of augmenters where they give you lots and lots of examples of possible augmentation. Uh, when it comes to image augmentation, I like to favor very light augmentation, things like brightening, blurs, uh, rotations, things that can be generally encountered in a natural environment where you're going to be doing a lot of your machine learning. Like, it depends on, there are some niche things where like increasing intensity of color channels, swapping color channels could be useful, but normally it just kind of adds a whole lot of noise into the image and it doesn't really help. So uh, let's go back here and what we're going to be focusing on is key point augmentation. So we already have, like if you look at the annotation files, we have uh, all these points and these are all our key points that we want to augment such that when we go here, you can see that the image has been made a little bit brighter, it's been shrunken down, and all of the key points have also moved in correspondence with how the image was augmented as well. So. Um, that's really what we're going to be aiming for. If you like, they also have something to support segmentation maps and masks, which is pretty much exactly what we're doing. It's just I'm doing the augmentation to the key points instead of just drawing masks. I'm a much bigger fan of, like, if you were to have, I don't know, quite a few terabytes of data, why would you store an entire extra image that has mass drawn over the original image? That would really increase the, the amount of disk space that you're gonna be taking up. And that's not really scalable in terms of data collection. So I, I went with key points here. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on. Um, and at this point, I will show you guys the image augmenter that I used. So this function is actually quite long and I think it would be a little more beneficial if I just copy and paste it in and then I comment out different portions and I'll just explain what's happening in the code instead of like watching me type everything in which I think is really kind of boring in this example. So uh, we're gonna create a function called augment poly that takes in our original image path and our annotation path. Uh, again, pretty boilerplate. We're going to read in our image, read in our annotation data. We only care about the information that's in the, uh, the, the values of the shapes key for that data. And what we're going to be doing in this first portion right here, we're going to be creating uh, an index to keep track of the points that we're augmenting. So when we augment this, there are multiple shapes that we actually do the augmentation to. Um, the problem is when we kind of receive the augmented key points back, uh, we really need to know, like, we're going to get a whole bunch of different, we're not just going to get, like, 0 through 4. We're going to get 0 through, I don't know, 13, and then we're going to get 14 to, to 17 for the square. And then these are just going to keep, the points are just going to keep indexing further and further. And we need to be able to recover the index for each uh, label that we actually 
uh, are interested in. So if we go back here, that's what we're actually doing right here. Um, the way ImageAug does this is it creates this, they have a key point class that will accept uh, these pairs. So uh, we pull out the specific, so within here we have a pair, 30, 198. We can come over here, store those in this key point class, and we're just building up all of those points. Um, now I create a new dictionary here that I want to store my label, and I want to store the index of where those key points are actually being created, all right, so that I can recover them later. Um, and then as I go through each shape, I just keep indexing based on the number of points that I have. So if it was a square, that would go up by four, all right? Um, and so at this point, let me see if I can comment out some of these lines. Hmm. Maybe I can just do this. And let me see if I can just print something like aug shape dick because that should be what we're building here. Okay, uh, I'm actually gonna come down here, insert a cell below, and I'm gonna copy and paste this next part. This is just reading in uh, the first image from the images directory with its annotation and creating a, so we're gonna call augment poly and we're gonna augment that shape dictionary uh, and the image and then we're going to just create the binary mask. So now that we have the augmented polygons, we can create the augmented mask for the augmented image, all right? And we can plot it. So this isn't actually going to be returning anything, so I'm going to comment that out. And in fact, I don't think I want to do this either. And because I'm not returning anything, let's just call augment poly here. I wonder if that'll run. Okay, cool. So you can see instead, like previously we had this whole list of dictionaries. What we're starting to build here in this first step is a list of dictionaries where we have the label that we care about and when you have the index of the key points that I want to recover. So you guys can see it goes from 0 to 10, 10 to 14. Uh, 14 to 33 and that's how we can index our key points later on. So if we continue with that logic, let's kind of keep going through here. Now I have uh, my key points. I can pretty much throw all of those points. So we've been building those points up in a list. I can throw all those points into this uh, key points on image class. And uh, there's another thing here. So when you have sequential, in order to make sure that the augmentation happens on the source image and the, the annotation portion, uh, and it has to do the, the random augmentation the same on both of them, what you can do is you can take your sequence and call the two deterministic method. So every single time you call that, that will randomly shuffle the, the sequential class. So you'll get a different augmentation every single time you call two deterministic, all right? Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking the sequence deterministic object and I'm calling the augment image method and I'm calling augment key points. And so I pass in my image. Uh, really it's a list of images, but I only am using one image and I'm using one key point here. Um, and so now that I have these augmented image and key point, I want to rebuild my list of dictionaries with the augmented polygons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through augmented shape dicks and I'm going to retrieve my index that I created before down here, right? And I'm just going to do a list comprehension to pull out and index the, the augmented key points from this object, all right? And because this is like a, an in-place operation, you can access the uh, shape points key and then set the values to those augmented points, all right? And then, so now you've just created, you modify the augmented shape dictionary, which originally looked like this, and we've now added on these new augmented points. And then we return those from our function. So let's see if that worked. If you come down here and you uncomment this, and I think, yeah, let me add that back in. So now this function is going to be returning some stuff, our augmented image and our augmented polygons, if I run this, what will happen is now we've got an augmented image. You can see it's been rotated a little bit. Um, 
And let's see if we can get an example of a blur. Okay, so yeah, this is the random blur. This is what the image looks like when it gets really blurry. And notice that the image really isn't like changing a whole lot, but it's changing a little bit. So it's just like if you were to take all the images you've already collected and then collect them a little bit differently, that's what you're looking for, for something like um, image augmentation. That's really what you're going for. And I will, this is a, an example just using the binary image augmentation. If you'd like to take a look at the, uh, what did I do? The multicolor augmentation. Uh, it's very similar and that'll just be in the Jupyter Notebook. I'll put both of the Jupyter Notebooks. Um, one is for all the stuff that I talked about in these four videos. And the other Jupyter Notebook will be uh, an example of, I think it was conditional random field processing. So uh, both of those will be in the GitHub repo. Take a look at them, you know, make sure that you understand if, if you're someone this is new to you, probably go through all these videos and practice it yourself. Um, you'll definitely learn a lot by doing that. So yeah, I think that's it for the programming portion. So if you're working with a slight modification of the data, or maybe you're collecting your data a little bit differently, this is hopefully enough detail to, to give you an idea of how to replicate this for yourself. That was kind of the goal of these videos. And in the next three videos, we're gonna be going over just theory. So we're gonna be going over the theory of FCN8, UNet, and then I'll talk a little bit about conditional random field post-processing, all right? So I'll see you guys in the next three videos if you wanna watch those, all right?